Let's talk about the web. Tim Berners-Lee, the son of Mary Lee Woods and Conway Berners-Lee, an English engineer and computer scientist, director and founder of various foundations and organizations, one of the most important people in the 20th century, and the inventor of World Wide Web. Brief history of World Wide Web. In 1966, work on ARPANET began. ARPANET is a simple military computer network. Siya yung nagsilbe bilang greatest influencer para sa creation ng internet. In 1974, the term internet is born. After Vince Cerf and Robert Kahn, known both as the fathers of the internet, published a protocol for packet network communications. In 1980, si Tim ay nagsert na magwork as a contractor sa CERN, or yung European Organization for Nuclear Research. As a result, he created the prototype system called Enquire. Enquire is a simple hypertext program which was the predecessor to World Wide Web. So bagong World Wide Web, meron tayong Enquire. You can see sa left side yung sample screen na makikita sa computer using Enquire. In 1989, CERN was the largest organization to use the internet in Europe. That's when Tim sees the opportunity na pwede palang pagsamahin yung internet at hypertext. So Tim wrote his proposal about the combination of hypertext in the internet on that same year. And then in 1990, his manager, Mike Sandal, accepted his proposal. He used the concept of Enquire to work on World Wide Web. And that same year, the first web browser and editor called World Wide Web, same name siya, pero without spaces, was created. In 1991, the first web page was released with the URL info.cern.ch. Yung page na ito nagpo-provide ng explanation kung paano gumamit ng web browser, paano gumawa ng isang web page, at kung paano natin i-host yung isang web page sa internet. In 1993, CERN put the World Wide Web software in the public domain. As a result, the first public web browser was released by Netscape. It's called Mosaic. In 1994, W3C, or World Wide Web Consortium, was founded by Tim at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Ang W3C ay nagpo-provide at naggagawa ng mga standard at recommendations para sa pag-improve ng quality ng World Wide Web. Three important terms in Tim's proposal. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, URL or Uniform Resource Locator, HTTP and or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Now let's discuss kung ano ang HTML. HTML is a computer language device to allow a website creation. Basically, HTML ang ginagamit para makagawa tayo ng isang web page. Ito ang sample ng isang code sa isang HTML. Ito ay base na sa HTML5 which is yung current version or yung latest version ng HTML. URL. URL is a kind of address that is unique to each resource on the web. This is used to easily find the website by providing it with a unique name address. So example nito ay mga nakikita natin sa taas ng isang web page. www.facebook.com mail.google.com slash mail slash u slash zero slash or hashtag inbox en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash main underscore page and so on. Next is HTTP. HTTP is a set of rules for transferring files on the World Wide Web when searching and clicking links. HTTP yung nag-govern ng rules kung paano tayo mag-transfer ng files online. Dito rin natin makikita kung gaano ka-secure ang isang website. HTTP and HTTPS, FTP, and many more. Now let us define what a web page is. Web page is what is visible on the user's web browser. It is normally defined as the hypertext documents that build up a website. Sa madaling salita, ang web page ay yung nakikita natin sa isang web browser. Three languages to learn in designing a web page. HTML, CSS, and JS. HTML or hypertext markup language. It defines the structure o yung parang skeleton ng isang page. CSS or cascading style sheet. It adds design to the appearance. Kumbaga siya yung ginagamit para mas maging presentable ang isang page. And then JS or JavaScript, it adds actions to the page. Ito naman yung nagbibigay ng action o functionality sa isang page. 
makikita sa visual na pinrovide ng Pinoy Dev Academy kung ano ang difference ng HTML, CSS at JavaScript. HTML, skeleton lang yung tsura. CSS, nagkaroon siya ng damit. JavaScript, nagkaroon siya ng action. Nagpe-play na siya ng guitar. Let's have a few examples. Ito ang example ng isang HTML code na may file name na samplehtml.html. Puro lang siya tags. Kapag inopen siya sa web browser, ganito ang lalabas. Click, wala nangyari. Ito naman ang example ng isang HTML code na may kasamang CSS. Kung mapapansin nyo, nagkaroon ng style tag. Kung saan, babaguhin natin yung font size, yung color, yung height, yung width, tsaka yung font weight, which is gagawin natin bold. Refresh and click. Wala ba din nangyari? Pero nabago yung design niya at nabago yung appearance niya. Ito naman ang example ng HTML code na may kasamang CSS at JavaScript. So kung makikita niyo sa baba, nagdagdag tayo ng function, which is yung function document.getElementById text change.innerHTML to something happen. So mangyayari lang yung function kapag may ginawa tayong action, which is yung click. Refresh. Click. At nabago yung text to something happen. So yun ang mangyayari kapag nilagyan natin ng CSS at JavaScript ang isang plain HTML. Evolution of web pages. We have web 1.0, web 2.0, and web 3.0. Web 1.0, or static web pages. Users cannot manipulate the content of the page. There is no interactivity. Sa static web pages, ang magagawa lang talaga natin sa kanya ay magbasa ng content. Ilan sa mga example ng modern static web pages are contact us page at yung about page. Look at this about page. Ang laman lang nito ay tungkol sa company, history niya at kung anong ginagawa niya. Literal, magbabasa lang tayo. Look at this contact page or contact us page. Ang laman lang nito ay address, contact number at map location ng office. So wala rin tayong ibang gagawin kundi basahin kung anong information na lang nandun. So ganun ang static web pages. Babasahin at titignan na lang natin yung information na nakalagay. Web 2.0 or dynamic web pages. This allows the user to interact with the page and there is a dynamic content. By interaction, the user can either fill out forms, answer surveys, and click some buttons. Example of this is yung login. Kung saan mag input ang user ng username and password at pipindutin niya lang yung login button. Dynamic content. Dynamic content is there's just one page, pero iba-iba yung pinaprovide na content ng page na yon. Yung timeline natin sa Facebook, iba-iba yung nagiging content niya at a certain instance. Yung Google search, mag-type ka ng ibang word, ibang content ang ilalabas niya, pero andun ka pa rin sa page na Google search. Web 3.0 or semantic web pages. It is the same with dynamic web pages but used to cater individual users. It allows data to be shared and reused across application, enterprise, and community boundaries. It's the same with dynamic web pages. May interaction, pero yung keyword ay nagka-cater siya ng individual. Some forms of catering ay yung may customization and kayang i-personalize ng user yung ibang part ng web page. Take a look at these Twitter settings. It allows the user to change some account information, including username, bios, and profile picture. So that's a form of catering. Yung YouTube videos ay pwedeng i-share or embed sa iba't ibang social networking sites. And data or the same account from Google ay pwedeng magamit sa iba't ibang web applications kagaya na lang ng mga nasa lista right side. Doon nagkakaroon ng pagka-reuse ng data na kung saan isang account nagagamit natin sa iba't ibang web applications. Earlier, we've discussed ang web page. Ang web page ay nakikita lang natin sa isang web browser. So isa lang naman na nakikita natin in one tab. Ngayon, website versus web application. Website is a collection of static web pages. So meaning, 
yung website binubuo ng mga web pages o ng mga static web pages. Sila yung website na walang interaction. Kung saan magbabasa lang tayo. Sabihin natin website ng isang school. Ano lang possible naman nun? Images ng school, about saan yung school, address ng school, tapos contact ng school. Web application is a collection of web pages that caters individual user. So ito yung mga web systems na combination ng mga dynamic at semantic web pages. Let's say Facebook. Facebook marami yung page. Pwede yung profile, pwede yung timeline page, pwede yung group page, pwede yung fan page, and so on. So yung mga bawat page na yun, nag-offer siya ng pag-cater sa bawat user. So yun yung difference ng isang website at web application.